Hello students, today in this lecture we are going to study the third chapter human reproduction and in this lecture especially we are going to discuss human male reproductive system. Generally if you take uh, male or female reproductive system, it generally consists of three parts. If you take human male reproductive system, it has three parts. The first one is the primary sex organ, second one is the accessory or secondary sex organs, accessory or secondary sex organs. This accessory or secondary sex organ is further divided into two types. One is accessory ducts and second one is accessory glands. And finally, the male reproductive system also consists of the external genitalia. External genitalia. So, these are the three main parts of human male reproductive system. First of all, if you take the primary sex organ, the primary sex organ is one where the process of gametogenesis when it comes to male reproduction, uh, reproductive system, the process of spermatogenesis takes place. Generally, spermatogenesis takes place in the testis of human male reproductive system. So, testis is the primary sex organ. So, human male reproductive system only generally yerdu testis irutte, a pair of testis. These testis, they are situated in a pigmented pouch. A pigmented pouch and an avenue of the scrotum. You can see here, this one is the scrotum, isn't it? So, this scrotum na main function, you know, generally before going to discuss the function of this scrotum. So, let us discuss the components. Actually, is to depth in gilla. So, this will be helpful for your neat examination. So, scrotum generally it has mainly two types of muscles. One though longitudinal, you can see those muscles are called as cremaster muscles, you know the circular muscles like this, you can see here blue color liver, so these circular muscles are now dartos muscles and therapy to create And as well as here in humans, the testis, you can see this yellow color structure is the testis. Testis generally extra abdominal, and the abdominal cavity is the horagade and they are descended into the scrotum with the help of a structure called as spermatic cord. Spermatic cord generally it has arteries, veins, fibers and as well as connective tissue. This is what is the spermatic cord. Spermatic cord is the testis scrotum descend. And as well as through a canal, this canal is the canal mukantara testis with the help of scrotum, sorry with the help of spermatic cord scrotum descend. That canal is the same as inguinal canal and therapy and here what is the function of scrotum generally human males only spermatogenesis it require low temperature and our internal body temperature is generally 37 degrees celsius temperature but at this temperature spermatogenesis will not occur because it require somehow little bit low temperature scrotum in the it generally maintain the temperature of testis around 2 to 2.5 degree Celsius less than normal body temperature. And the normal body temperature 37 degree Celsius is either kinta minus 2 to 2.5 degree Celsius temperature. And around scrotum helps to maintain the temperature around 34.5 degree to 35 degree Celsius temperature. This temperature is required for the process of spermatogenesis. So, this is a prescribed book clear function. But if you maintain maintain the small points here in the note. Here in the testis, as I said, especially in the scrotum, here are the muscles. One is the cremaster muscles, actually the voluntary muscles. So, you know the circular dartos muscles. When external temperature increases, Faragade temperature in other rise are this cremaster muscle and as well as dartos muscle is another relax. Agutte. Muscles relax, agutte. scrotum actually 
move away from the abdomen. So abdomen is the the pelvic region. So that's the abdominal region that we have in the scrotum because of the relaxation of this cremaster muscle and as well as dartos muscle. And when the scrotum move it brings the testis away from the body. So thereby it reduces the temperature by 2 to 2.5 degrees Celsius. Suppose the temperature is low, these two muscles, cremaster and dartos muscles, contract. Contract this scrotum bring the testis near to the abdomen. And the body is hatra the body is hatra again, the temperature is not exceeding 37. Within 37, around 35, 34 to 35 degrees matra maintain. This is how scrotum helps to maintain the temperature that is required for spermatogenesis. I mean, scrotum bitre next uh, when we take uh, first of all we will take the primary sex organ is the testis. This is the sectional or diagrammatic representation of the human male reproductive system. Here first of all now uh, testis na structure na tagolona. I have just magnified this portion here. Idan nili magnify maadkoni devi. So generally testis it is generally uh, having three layered structure more layers on the the outermost layer e layer yellow color this layer it is tunica vaginalis tunica vaginalis is followed by illi is saffron color this one is the tunica vasculosa then tunica vasculosa is followed by the next layer this one is tunica albigine idana tunica albigine anta bittu kariyithivi here this tunica vasculosa it is generally mainly made up of blood capillaries which is generally tightly found attached to this tunica albigine layer tunica albigine is generally it is white uh, uh, fibrous connective tissue this tunica albigine you can see it invaginate inside it is the invagination sana produce madute and this tunica albigine it divides the testis into several compartments around approximately 200 to 250 compartments are divided and these compartments each chamber this chamber and as well as this chamber these compartments are called as testicular lobules approximately around 200 to 250 compartments and each testicular lobule generally possess 1 2 3 and one in the more highly coiled tubules those tubules are called as seminiferous tubules But these seminiferous tubules are the functional unit of testis. Yaki then a functional unit of the Kartyandra because inside the seminiferous tubule the process of spermatogenesis takes place. And the diagram na clear and observe more pun, right? Yella chambers are the kantaha even the seminiferous tubules in the way, yella one the kade unite up the other way. So all the seminiferous tubules converge and they unite to form a network of tubules this network of tubules in network of tubules na now retate testis and the so these network of tubules are called as retate testis and illi exactly converge agutala ee point na vasa recta anta kariyabodu this is an extra information for you this region exact this region we can call it as vasa recta but this network on the mesh like structure this is what called as retate testis and from retate testis around 
15 to 20 highly convoluted ductules will arise and you will note both so here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 are going to be but this is the diagrammatic representation. There might be around 15 to 20 convoluted ductules will be there. So, these structures you these 15 to 20 convoluted ductules are called as vasa efferentia. General again, vasa efferentia is ciliated cells. This vasa efferentia it uh, generally helps in the peristalsis and movement of sperms uh, from this retained testis to the next uh, region called as epididymis. Epididymis is known testis na pakkadalli to the uh, uh, side or testis na side ke correct hai. There is a comma shaped structure. This is one comma shaped structure bolte. Here, this is also a duct. This is also a highly coiled region. This comma shaped structure is called epididymis. This is epididymis. So, this is the epididymis. And from epididymis, a long duct of around 45 to 50 centimeter long duct arises. That long duct is called as vas difference or ductus difference. One more name is their ductus difference. Okay, illi new clear observe more even one side yag birthed in an input covic new retate estis, vasa efferentia, epididymis, and vas difference or ductus difference. All these four together are called as the ducts, accessory ducts. What you will note, Madidinili. Accessory or secondary sex organ only accessory ducts barutte, matte accessory glands barutte. Anta. Niwa prescribed book kali accessory ducts. There are four accessory ducts has been mentioned. Avayao panta dure retate testis, vasa efferentia, epididymis, and vas deferens. But you will just take bare ducts here. Tawa, adan na explanation korte ni. This is actually about the sectional view of testis. And one more most important point you have to remember. If you magnify this area, you know. Uh, like for example, E area na thakula na, is to area na, is to area na na magnify maad pula na. Magnify maad, absorb maad adhra, it look like this. You can see, this is blue colored line, na nagla head dhindi, this is the tunica albigene, which divide the testis into several compartments called testicular lobules. Idhu one the compartment, this compartment is the testicular lobule. Jaga, Ikali Jagana now, testicular lobule and the Karibodo. And illi, if you take this is one semiferous tubule and this is another semiferous tubule, either on the section the one If you take the section of semiferous tubule, inside this semiferous tubule there is a germinal epithelium. Either now germinal epithelium the Karibodo. This germinal epithelium after uh, differentiation and after meiosis, it gives rest to sperms. Inside the lumen, cavity there, inside the lumen, uh, here in the cavity you can see the sperms, few sperms. And along with this, the seminiferous tubule also possess the pyramid shaped cells. It is the pyramid shaped cells and these uh, pyramid shaped cells are called as Sertoli cells. Sertoli cells and therapy to carry These Sertoli cells, so, you spermatogenesis ke, spermiogenesis process ke, nourishment na provide maadate. And for the formation of sperms, they provide nourishment. But along with this, E seminiferous tubule go, E seminiferous tubule go, not be interstitial space irutala. This interst interstitial space, it will have some specialized cells. If you call specialized cells, now under the, now these specialized cells are now lyric cells under the carry Lyric cells. Actually, these lyric cells that uh, secrete a hormone called as androgen. Under the, it testes the other functions are now under the testes. It helps in the process of spermatogenesis for the formation of sperms and as well as it acts as endocrine gland because it synthesizes a male hormone called as androgen. 
so testis generally it's a homologous structure to the female ovary female alli ovary ge testis antakkantadu ondu homologous structure anta naavu helabodu this is about the testis along with that bere structures irthave primary sex organ aitu accessory sex organs alli ducts bagge study madidre but nivella diagram alli observe maadkondre here as i said from epididymis a long duct arise around 45 cm and this long duct as i said it is called as vas deferens when ee vas deferens it ascend into the abdomen abdominal cavity alagalu inge ascend agutte arches over the urinary bladder and it receive a duct from seminal vesicle nodi this one is this seminal vesicle andre vas deferensing ge ascend agibittu urinary bladder inda overarch agibittu seminal vesicle inda ond duct annu receive maadkolutte so this one is the duct of seminal vesicle okay but here you can observe the duct of seminal vesicle and vas deferens they unite to form a common duct this common duct is called as ejaculatory duct this common duct anu now ejaculatory duct anthe bitto karitivi this ejaculatory duct finally joins to the urethra through the prostate gland so this gland is called as prostate gland and you will clear ag observe madabodu vas deferens elli seminal vesicle na duct jothe unite aagta idiyo before that vas deferens is dilated so sulpa higirutte ee rite dilate agirutte this dilated portion of vas deferens is called as ampulla idanna ampulla anthe bittu karithare and finally enagutte seminal vesicles duct and as well as duct of this vas deferens which unite to form ejaculatory duct that finally joins to the urethra this one is the urethra urinary bladder in the arise aagtakanta long duct na naave enu karthivi urethra anthe bittu karithe finally urethra ge connect agutte and here accessory sex organs are in accessory glands anthe helidde three types of accessory glands are there in human male reproductive system one is seminal vesicles generally they are paired paired structures and second one is the prostate gland generally a single gland will be there idu one chest nut size irutte a chest nut sized gland and there are again paired small p sized gland batani size irutakanta glands eradu glands irutte ee glands na now coppers glands anta kariyabodu or one more name is there bulbo urethral glands bulbo urethral glands ant kuda ne idana karibodu so this is about the three accessory this is the third one three accessory glands ee three glands en madutte these glands secrete the seminal fluid seminal fluid ana secrete madutte so generally if you take first of all the seminal vesicles seminal vesicles they contribute for about around 60 to 70% of the seminal fluid or seminal plasma and they secrete slightly alkaline fluid andre slight agi basic irtakkantaha ondu basic ph irtakkanta fluid na secrete madutte around 7.4 irutte ph and mainly the seminal plasma which is secreted from seminal vesicle it mainly consists of fructose prostaglandins and other coagulating factors irutte here fructose provide nourishment or nutrition for this sperm and the prostaglandins en secrete madutte idralli prostaglandins semen female na ondu reproductive tract olagade uterus olagade hogada hodaga female uterus na contraction maadi sperms propel agodakke olagade reach agodakke easy agi help madutte that prostaglandin 
and finally it also having certain coagulating factors adu en madutte semen na sulpa gatti agothe rithi coagulate agothe rithi madutte when it takes prostate glands nodi prostate glands na slightly acidic seminal plasma na secrete madutte and these prostate gland uh, secretion mainly includes as uh, sorry citric acid citric acid andirutte along with that it also has certain enzymes like phosphatase enzymes like uh, amylase enzymes isn't it and here citric acid actually it provide nutrition to the sperm and as well as responsible for the acidity of the seminal plasma secreted by prostate gland adu nenu bitkoli and this contribute only for about 20 to 30% of the seminal plasma and final agi coppers glands or bulbo urethral glands anta yen karithivi actually the main function of this coppers gland they also secrete alkaline or neutral flow sorry alkaline or basic fluid yak idu alkaline fluid na secrete madutte during which time andre actually they secrete alkaline fluid immediate after the erection of penis during sexual intercourse athwa copulation normal age flaccid agirthakanta ond penis it must be erect it the erection agbeku erection adrene penis can be easily introduced into the vagina after erection anagutte bulbo urethral glands they secrete uh, uh, alkaline fluid why alkaline fluid is required because sperms cannot survive at acidic condition so acidic condition idre sperms satogutte so to maintain alkaline condition in the urethra yakare already urethra mukantara urine pass agirutte so urethra will have some acidic condition so to neutralize acidic condition of urethra and as well as uh, neutralize uh, the acidic condition in the female reproductive tract and the third function is lubricating the penis for easy introduction of penis into the vagina so in more reasons in the coppers gland en madute that secrete alkaline uh, lubricating fluid so this is about the three accessory glands and finally external genitalia now the males only the external genitalia is called as penis so this one is the external genitalia which is called as penis and here you can clearly observe penis has two types of muscles is extra information you make is central the all muscle nodi you can see this muscle this portion this is corpus spongiosum the corpus spongiosum of the kanta do it encloses this is corpus spongiosum actually it is single in number it encloses urethra in it urethra at the other side in the pass out there and corpus spongiosum ke akade ikade andre if this is the corpus spongiosum here and here there are two muscles which are also erectile in nature these two muscles are called as corpus cavernosum ee muscle anna ee muscle anna now corpus cavernosum anta karithe corpus cavernosum this corpus spongiosum and corpus cavernosum are erectile tissue that helps in the erection of penis uh, during the sexual excitement and one more thing that you have to remember corpus spongiosum it generally dilate uh, enlarges at the tip of the penis to gives rise to a very sensitive part of human male reproductive system called glans penis glans penis and this glans penis is surrounded by a fold of skin that is called as foreskin idana foreskin anta karithiri generally the foreskin is retractile hindagadege pull maadidre next mundagadege reach agutte so it is retracted in nature foreskin is retractile in nature this is about human male reproductive system and as well as uh, the three parts primary sex organ accessory and as well as external genitalia and remaining topics we will discuss in the next class thank you